Lesson 3.1, increasing and decreasing functions. Uh, we've done a lot with functions and their derivatives, differentiating different types of functions and analyzing. Uh, we talked about um, distance or displacement and then velocity and acceleration. And this just continues kind of bringing those things to light and doing similar things more often, but this time talking directly about where a graph is increasing or where it is decreasing. And whenever we're talking about that, um, well, let's take a little note first, or maybe not. So when we want to talk about increasing and decreasing, we kind of talk about things in terms of their intervals, right? So here we can see we have an interval that's decreasing, then we have an interval that's increasing, then we have another interval that's decreasing, and then we have another interval that's increasing. But how do we find these intervals? How do we find these x values that create intervals that are worth talking about? Um, every minimum and maximum is a zero of the derivative. Yeah, nice. Every, every minimum or maximum is a zero of the derivative. So if we took the derivative of our red function, we would get a zero here, a zero here, and a zero here, which means all we need to do is differentiate, and then what? Set the function to zero. Set it to zero and solve it, okay? So let's take a couple notes that describe that. The first derivative, the first derivative of a continuous function, the first derivative of a continuous function f of x can be used to determine intervals of increase and decrease. What's true? When f prime of x is negative, f of x is decreasing. When f prime of x is positive, f of x is increasing. Uh, the first derivative of a continuous function, f of x, can be used to determine intervals of increase and decrease. When f prime of x is negative, f of x is decreasing. When f prime of x is positive, f of x is increasing. So, we need to, or we will, or what we're going to do, we're going to differentiate f of x. To find f prime of x, then set f prime of x equal to zero and solve. So here we go. Example one, all we need to do is find the intervals that are worth talking about as far as increasing and decreasing. So we have f of x, f of x is 2x cubed, and maybe you can put in a little note that you're finding, find intervals. 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 36x plus five. Go ahead and determine the derivative f of x, f, f prime of x. And check up here when you're done. All right. Now we're going to set this equal to zero and solve it because where this is greater than zero, greater than zero, we'll have increasing. 
where it is less than zero, we will have decreasing, okay? So first thing we need to do is then set it equal to zero and then solve. There should probably a factor. Yep, we're gonna factor for sure. Differentiate set equal to zero and solve. So here we go, we've got zero equals 6x squared plus 6x minus 36. And yeah, the first step to solving is factoring, and the first step to factoring is looking for a common factor. So do we see a common factor among all of these terms? Six. six. And actually, because it's set equal to zero, it's really easy. We can divide every term by six. So on the left, zero divided by six is zero. And then divide all these by six, we end up with x squared plus x minus six. Now we can factor, we're looking at sum and product, two numbers that multiply to negative six and add to positive one. X plus three and X minus two become our factors, which means that X equals negative three or X equals positive two. This is when F prime of X will equal zero. Okay, so these define our intervals that are worth talking about. So from here, we're going to set up an interval chart. Now, set up interval table or interval chart, whatever you want to call it. So at the top, I'm going to write our intervals. So if the first, if we're reading left to right and we have a zero of the derivative at negative three, then we're going to be talking about any of the x values less than negative three. We can talk about what happens at negative three. We can talk about what happens in between negative three and two, which is our other zero. We can talk about what's happening at x equals 2. And we can talk about what's happening when x is greater than 2. For each of these intervals, intervals, we need a test value. So a test value for less than negative three, negative four would be an easy one. This one's obviously negative three. Our test value for x equals negative three is x equals negative three. Test value in between negative three and positive two, zero is probably pretty easy to work with. Two and next test value will be three. In our next row, we're going to determine the sign of our test value when we put it in f prime of x, okay? So it's gonna give us, we're gonna just get the sign of it, and then the sign is going to tell us whether f of x, the original function, is increasing or decreasing or staying the same, okay? So again, this is f prime of x, the derivative of f of x will be the slope. So if the slope ends up being negative, then we're heading down. If the slope is zero, then we're flatlining. If the slope is positive, then we're increasing. Yes? Here we go. So let's take negative four, plug it in uh, f prime of x. I can use any piece here. I'm gonna go right down to my factored form because that's the easiest uh, to work with mentally. So you've got negative three, sorry, negative four plus three. That makes this bracket negative one. This bracket is negative six, so we have positive six there. Which means that f of x is increasing over that interval. At negative three, if we sub in negative three into our first bracket, we get zero, which makes the whole thing equal zero. So the slope is zero, which means it's not positive or negative, it's flat. All right, if we sub in uh, to f prime of x, if we sub in, and I, uh, well, we won't do that. So if we sub in zero, what do we get? We get positive three times negative two, that's gonna be negative six. 
which means we are decreasing. Right, right. When we sub in 2, that's a 0, so that's easy. It's going to be flat there. When we sub in 3, we get 6 times 1, which is positive, which means it's increasing over that interval. So we could summarize this information, uh, f of x increasing, f of x decreasing. Where is it increasing? It's increasing when x is less than negative 3 and when x is greater than positive 2. And it is decreasing when x is in between negative 3 and positive 2. We could also then uh, go back and graph our derivative function and you'd be able to see the connection uh, or graph the original and you'd be able to see these intervals really easily. So it doesn't tell us to sketch it but we're going to sketch f of x based on the information that we found from the derivative. So we know that f of x is increasing up to x. Uh, so the derivative has a 0 at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and positive 2, 1, 2. And we know it's increasing up to negative 3. So we're going to have a max somewhere along this line x equals negative 3. If we wanted to find exactly where that max is, we could sub x equals negative 3 into our original equation. I'll just tell you it ends up being something around uh, 83 or 84, looks like. So it's got a max way up here. Call this uh, 90, call this 80. It's got a max way up there. Then we are going to be decreasing all the way to x equals positive 2. So if we wanted to find out where that really was on our curve, we would just sub positive 2 in here. And we're not going to do all the math, but you end up at about negative 40. And then we can pretty much sketch our curve. We've got a cubic that has a max at negative 3, goes all the way down. We could get the y-intercept as well. The y-intercept is plus 5, right? It's just the constant term. So again, my drawing is not uh, spot on by any means, but it's going to look something like that. quick run through the steps. In order to sketch the graph of f of x, we used its derivative to find its intervals of increasing and decreasing. So we took its derivative, we factored it to find the zeros. That gave us the intervals worth talking about. We chose test values for each interval, found out if the slope was positive or negative, uh, which meant the original was increasing level or decreasing. And then we sketched. Okay, example two, I'm going to do right on this piece of paper. We're going to use derivatives. So what we did in the first one is we, we had an original equation, f of x. We found its derivative, and then we were able to sketch the original based on the derivative. We're going to do something very similar in the next section, except we're not doing it with an equation. We're doing it with a graph. We're given the graph of f prime of x, so we're given the derivative and we need to sketch a possible function f of x. Now, if you have a derivative, you can actually do calculus, you can uh, differentiate backwards, which is called integration, and you can get an exact function, except for the constant term. You won't know the constant term. So here, we're doing a possible function, because we can get what it looks like, its shape, but we don't know where it is on the y-axis. We don't know where its y-intercept is gonna be. But basically, if this is uh, the derivative of f of x, that means the slope 
of f of x is what? Negative 2. Okay, so if the derivative is negative 2, then that means the slope of the original is negative 2. So you can draw any line here that has a slope of negative 2. Okay, because this derivative is constant, that means our uh, original function f of x is going to be linear. It's going to have a slope of negative 2. And again, you can draw it uh, really however you want, as long as it has a slope of negative 2. That pen is absolutely useless. I'm just going to draw mine through 0, 2, and 1, 0. That is a possible graph of f of x. And if you want to make a little note beside it, um, f prime of x equals negative 2. Therefore, slope of f of x is constant. and f of x is linear with slope of negative 2. If we look at b, uh, b again is a graph of a derivative function and we need to sketch a possible original function f of x. So what we can see is the slope is linear, which means our original function is going to be a quadratic. The slope to the left of 2 is positive and decreasing. To the right of 2, it is negative and decreasing. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means we have a parabola that opens down. And again, we don't know where the vertex is. It can move up and down and whatever. But what we do know is that to the left, we're going to have a positive slope that's decreasing. And to the right of two, we're going to have a negative slope that is decreasing. Okay, we'll take some notes. F prime of x positive when x is less than 2, negative when x is greater than 2. So f of x increasing for x less than 2 and decreasing for x greater than 2. Again, it's also helpful to realize that if your derivative is linear, your original function is going to be quadratic. In our next one, our derivative is a quadratic. So what is our original going to be? It's going to be a cubic and what do we know about its slope? If the derivative comes down to zero, but never crosses zero, and then it pops back up, f prime of x is never negative. So f of x has positive slope. Uh, at, at x equals 1, the slope is 0. So again, we don't know up and down. We don't know its y-intercept. We don't know its constant, but we know that its slope is always going to be positive, except right here it's going to be 0. So we're just drawing a cubic. Well, if you look at it, um, assuming the derivative one is squared, can um, f prime of x is equal half of x minus 1 squared. 
That's the function we have. And then we can just. Um, okay, d is uh, another quadratic. The the differentiated function, the derivative is quadratic, but this time we can see it crosses zero. So that means uh, the slope of our original function, f of x, is going to be decreasing, where? Uh, to the left of 1, where x is less than 1, and where x is greater than 3, but it's going to be increasing in between 1 and 3. So what will that look like? Well, we're looking at a cubic. It's going to be decreasing until it gets to 1. And again, I don't know how high or low it is, so I'm drawing this curve wherever I want. Okay. Then it's going to be increasing until it gets to x equals 3. And then it's going to be decreasing for the rest of its domain. Okay, just so that we don't pigeonhole our thinking um, and only seeing one possible function, I'm just going to add another curve to each of my graphs. This one, we decided since the derivative was negative 2, it just had to be a line with a slope of negative 2. I could draw that line anywhere as long as it has a slope of negative 2, okay? So that purple line is another option there. B, it had an uh, increasing up to x equals 2 and then decreasing to the right of x equals 2. So again, I could draw any kind of curve that does what I just said it has to do. We don't know how high or low it is. Same thing here. I could have come all the way up to here with my cubic. It's just an estimation. Okay, and then this one. Again, we could have come all the way down here, had our change of direction, come to there, change of direction, and then back down. We don't know exactly what these things look like, uh, and this probably doesn't have as significant a, a bump as this. This is exaggerated, but you can see that it's going to increase over that interval and then decrease again, and those are just estimates, possible functions. In example three, we take this concept and apply it to changing temperatures. So the temperature of a person with a certain strain of the flu can be approximated by the function T of D equals negative 5 over 18 D squared plus 15 over 9d plus 37, where d is in between 0 and 6. T is the person's temperature in degrees Celsius. D is the number of days after we start showing symptoms. And then we need to talk about the intervals in which the person's temperature is increasing. Uh, we're going to deal with those symptoms quickly. First step, differentiate. So t prime of d, the derivative of t of d. Uh, we've got, take this uh, 2, multiply it out front. That's going to give us negative 10 over 18, which reduces to negative 5 over 9d plus 15 over 9. So if we solve this, that will give us our intervals. So we're going to solve, we're going to set it equal to zero. Again, following the same steps that we did before. Here I'm going to uh, multiply each side by nine first, just so I can see this a little easier. Could do a couple steps at once, but we won't. Uh, now I can factor out that negative 5, I can see that it's going to be uh, 3, but uh, or I can easier yet maybe subtract 15 
or add 5d to the other side. So we go 5d equals 15, d equals 3. So this value divides the domain into two parts. One side of it will be increasing and one side of it will be decreasing. So all we need to do then is make our chart. We have our intervals. We have x to the left of 3. We have x at 3. We have x greater than 3. Test values, pretty straightforward. Uh, if you want to skip the test value part, you can. You can just do that in your head, and you don't even have to really solve it. You can just get the sine of the derivative, sine of f prime of x, which will tell you uh, increasing or decreasing for f of x. Test value here would be 2, 3, for, uh, if I sub into the original, not the original, sorry, I get the sine of f prime of x, and I can use any uh, kind of piece of this, and actually maybe here take number one, one is easier to work with than two in this interval. Uh, but if we sub that in, we end up with negative five over nine, plus 15 over 9, that's 10 over 9, so that's positive. If we take the number 3, we of course end up with 0, because that was a 0 of the derivative. If we take 4, we end up with negative 20 over 9, plus 15 over 9, that's going to be negative. Okay, so then f of x, if our derivative is positive, then we are increasing. If it's 0, we're flat. And if it's negative, we're decreasing. The question asked, uh, when is the person's temperature increasing? The person's temp is increasing. What, is this, what does this mean? To the left of 3. What was D being measured in? By the way, I should have D's there, not X's. D stands for? Days. Days. And we're measuring over the first six days, which means over the first three days, their temperature is increasing. The person's temperature is increasing over the first three days. Okay, example four, to wrap up a short lesson. We're gonna sketch a continuous function for each set of conditions. So we're gonna be given some information. In A, we're told that the derivative is greater than zero when x is greater than zero and the derivative is less than zero when x is greater than zero. I have a typo here. This one is less than zero. And f of zero equals four. Okay, so we're told that... You can. Okay, we're told that... I'm just going to sketch a, sketch one of these guys, right? Well, we're only given two intervals. So we have uh, an interval where it's increasing and an interval where it's decreasing. Yeah. So it's going to be quadratic. It's going to go up and then down or down and then up. So it's going to go up and then down because we have to the left of zero, it's increasing and to the right of zero it's decreasing and they even tell us the value of the function at zero is four. So we know the point zero, four is on our graph and we know that to the left of it it's increasing and to the right of it it's decreasing. Label it, that's y equals f of x. So we don't know the exact uh, function 
but we know it looks something like that. Okay, B. B gives us uh, another interval. We're told that f of x is greater than zero, which means increasing. I'm not going to write that. f of x is increasing. When is this? When x is less than negative one and when x is greater than two. And that f prime of x is less than zero, so the slope is negative when x is in between negative one and two. And they tell us also that the value of the function at zero is zero. So this thing goes through zero, zero. So we could put a little dot at zero, zero. We also know that it is increasing to the left of negative one. So there's negative one. And then it decreases till you get to x equals two. And then it's gonna be increasing again. So it's gonna be something like this, something like this. And then in here, it's gonna decrease and it's gonna go through this point. So I might even just draw that part first. It's gonna be decreasing through that point. And then at two, it's gonna come back up. And here it's gonna, at negative one, it's gonna be like that. It's kind of funny thinking about graphs left to right and right to left and increasing and decreasing, but just keeping those things uh, clear. So you have clearly over here, it's increasing from here to here it's decreasing and then over this way it's increasing again and this is the graph of f of x okay again the whole lesson was just relating the slope of any function f of x to its derivative and the sign of the derivative within certain intervals using key points so you can sketch some graphs in example four it gave us a specific point that the original function goes through and that allows us to give a more accurate uh, sketch of the original function from the derivative. Practice problems to think about come from page 156 and you should be able to handle 1 through 14.